Let me take this opportunity to wish you a very pleasant and comfortable stay. I am particularly privileged to welcome the ministerial delegations from 25 countries. At the outset, I express my gratitude to the governments of participating countries and the overseas visitors for being here with us today. Let me start by giving you a brief introduction about my state. Karnataka has been one of the fastest growing states in the Indian economy in recent years and a pioneer in industry. Karnataka is a pioneer in power generation in India with the first hydroelectric power station in the country was set up in 1902. Even before this, the Kolar gold fields had been started. Textile mills and an industrial workshop were also established. In the following decades, many initiatives were taken to set up national institutes of excellence such as the Indian Institute of Science, Raman University Institute and much later the Indian Institute of Management. The state was at the forefront of the financial development of the country with one district alone being the birthplace of five major commercial banks. Shortly after independence, Karnataka took the lead in the industrial development of the country. The nation's high technology manufacturing industries were established here. Industries such as machine tools, defense electronics, aerospace, telecommunications, and earth moving equipment set up manufacturing facilities in the state. Back then, it was the government which took the lead in developing the industrial base in the country, and it is for this reason that a number of public sector undertakings came to be based in the state. These include prominent companies such as Bharat Electronics Limited, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Hindustan Machine Tools, Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited, among a whole host of others. The success of the public sector undertakings caught the attention of the private sector in India. With the presence of so many institutes of higher learning in the state, the private sector industry began to sprout in the state. Initially, the manufacturing sector took the lead, but soon the service sector followed. The decade of the 80s saw the green shoots of information technology sector in India finding a natural base in Bangalore. This was soon followed by other high-tech industries such as biotechnology in the decade of the 90s. Today, as we gather here to talk about global value chains, we find that Bangalore has naturally grown up to become an integrated part of, the, of such value chains. Many Fortune 500 companies spanning the globe source the required services such as software, research and development, business process of outsourcing from Bangalore. The state has become a hub for research and development. Some of the world's leading multinationals have set up their design and innovation centers in the state. Karnataka is known as the knowledge hub of Asia. It's a matter of pride that the World Economic Forum has identified Karnataka among the top four innovation hubs in the world. Today, Karnataka is one of the leading states in India's growth story. It is the fourth largest foreign direct investment receiving state in India and has been ranked first for a health business climate and attracting investments by the World Bank's Investment Climate Index. Karnataka accounts for around 40% of the India's information technology exports and provides direct employment to 8 lakh persons and indirect employment more than 2.5 million. We want to go a step further to replicate our success in the services sector in facilitate the next phase of development of the state's manufacturing sector. This will generate substantial employment op opportunities and result in equitable growth across Karnataka. It is the intention of our government to create and sustain an environment conducive to risk-taking 
and long term investments india's foreign direct investment regulations have also been made more liberal transparent and investor friendly for the past few years karnataka has set up a manufacturing task task force that suggests specific interventions to drive growth in the sector its suggestion is to make karnataka one of the top 3 states for manufacturing investment we are considering this and would like to achieve manufacturing at 25% of state gross domestic products by 2025 an incremental 1.5 crore jobs and by targeting a balanced and inclusive growth across the state in this regard the government is setting up the national investment and manufacturing zones in tumkur which is spread across 12500 acres apart from this three more national investment and manufacturing zones are proposed in bidar gulbarga and kolar karnataka's new industrial policy which is under formulation and to be introduced in april 2014 would focus on raising the state's competitiveness in attracting investments to make the state as one of the top 3 investment destinations and ensure balanced and integrated industrialization the policy would also focus on promotion of national investment and manufacturing zones development of industrial infrastructure promotion of entrepreneurship and skill up gradation and attractive packages and incentives for micro small and medium entrepreneurs i will also address varied needs of industry investors and entrepreneurs and promote karnataka brand in international platforms with the assistance of government of india we are also in the process of finalizing bangalore mumbai economic corridor which would be undertaken in collaboration with united kingdom which will further the state's development we have identified potential of 19065 crore for investments in infra- infrastructure in the state the government is committed to establishing strategic partnership to realize a strong base of urban infrastructure that will in addition to fueling the phase at which our economy is growing also spur the growth of all other sectors in the economy the information communication technology sector in the state has achieved high levels of growth bangalore will become the largest information technology cluster by 2020 with 20 lakh it professionals 60 lakh indirect jobs and rupees 4 lakh crore exports which will have about 40% of india's it exports the second largest it cluster of in silicon valley is in bangalore and moving up the value chain from being the it capital of the world and to become the innovation capital of the world is the present need Bangalore become the first city in India perhaps in Asia to offer free public wifi to its citizens at five locations which will be expanded to 15 locations during the last week this will give a fillip to young entrepreneurs startups businesses students and youth to access rich online content for education and other opportunities <laughs> Bangalore has the potential to host setting up the world's first digital media city in bangalore which can become the hub for content creation management and distribution our government has just begun work on this project recently the proposed information technology investment region is likely to be created with private sector participation outside bangalore karnataka was the first state in the country to exempt it its animation vfx CGI telecom from standing orders on labor we have recently as part of the it policy extended this for a period of 5 years from april 1st 2014 i must also mention here the boundless beauty that karnataka holds where tourism is, tourism is yet another fast emerging sector in the state karnataka has two world heritage sites at hampi and patarkallu 
Karnataka has been tremendous growth in tourist arrivals, which have grown by more than 300 percent from mere 25 million 10 years ago to 85 million today. Thus, Karnataka offers a variety of investment opportunities throughout the value chain and across industri industry verticals spanning both the manufacturing and service sectors. In realizing our vision to achieve inclusive growth through the state's long-term development plan, we wish to take advantage of the power of global partnerships, which is also the objective of this summit. Confederation of Indian Industry has been an excellent partner with the state government. Their involvement in development of an aerospace policy proved helpful. The government has also formed a giant task force with Confederation of Indian Industry. I am happy that CIA has brought out a book on roadmap for industrial development of Mysore, which was released a little while ago. Mysore has enormous potential to rapidly develop and accommodate the growth in various sectors which cannot otherwise take place in Bangalore because of pressure and resources. In this direction, Mysore will be the new growth engine which will com complement Bangalore in many ways. Our government is keen to build on our natural advantages to be a leader of growth in the Indian economy. I request this August gathering to eminent ministers, industry leaders and other guests to come forward and explore the diverse opportunities offered by the state. Our government is willing to extend its full support to investors who are interested in investing in Karnataka. Thank you one and all. Jai Hind, Jai Karnataka.